Hey guys, so do from Denmark here. The official spoiler season for Oath of the Gatewatch is in two weeks, but already now we have got leaked cards from the set, which uh, includes new planeswalkers and lands and other creatures, which I wanted to show today. But if you don't want to see those, uh, you should definitely click away. <laughs> anyway, I have been uh, putting a link down below uh, where you can see these uh, spoilers because I will only talk about uh, some of them, some of them I think, which is uh, the interesting ones. So let's check it out. On the service today is a new version of Sandra, which is called Sandra Flamecaller and costs you 6 mana to cast and starts off with 4 loyalty counters. Her first ability gives you 1 loyalty counter where you put 2, 3, 1 red elemental creature tokens with haste onto the battlefield, exile them at the beginning of the next end step. Her middle ability costs you 0 loyalty counters to do, where you discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards plus 1. Her ultimate costs you X loyalty counters to do, where Sandra Flamecaller deals X damage to each creature. I actually really like uh, this new version of uh, Sandra, although she costs you 6 mana to cast, so it's not, it's not like she's really tempo-like. But her middle ability, where you discard all the cards in your hand, then draw that many cards plus one, is really awesome. Um, but it seems like uh, another version of Sandra we haven't seen before, because Sandra used to be you know, all about dealing a lot of damage, which her ultimate can do, but it can only deal damage to each creature, so your own creature will also die. Of course, unless they have uh, more toughness than the uh, than the opponent's creatures, for instance, which can be good in that case. But uh, I, I mean, that middle ability is uh, it's really awesome and uh, and can be used in uh, different ways with the uh, mechanics and so on. I also think her uh, first ability is quite uh, aggressive, where you put uh, two, three, one elemental creature with haste onto the battlefield, which is uh, pretty neat that you can cast those out to just uh, attack with right away, but also uh, just uh, you know defend with, although they are. 3 1, so they die quick, but it's still better than nothing. So I think she's uh, she's actually good, but uh, 6 mana is quite a lot. The other planeswalker we're going to have is a new version of Lisa, which is called Lisa Voice of Syndica, and costs you 3 mana to cast and starts off with 3 loyalty counters. The first ability gives you 1 loyalty counter where you put a 0 1 green plane creature token onto the battlefield. Her second ability costs you 2 loyalty counters to do, where you put a 1 1 counter on each creature you control. Her ultimate costs you 7 loyalty counters to do. You gain X life and draw X cards where X is the number of lanes you control. I actually think she's uh, really good uh, for only 3 mana, especially the first two abilities where you know you cast the uh, creatures out, that uh, with the second ability you can just uh, give those uh, creatures uh, counters. Of course also, uh, also the other creatures you have on the battlefield, but these two go uh, really well in hand. And of course her ultimate has to be about lanes, which is really awesome with the Awakening and so on, so I definitely think she's a really neat uh, planeswalker for only 3 mana, so I definitely think she will see a lot of play. The final word is a blue Sphinx creature that costs you 7 mana to cast and has a 5-5. Five five. Sphinx of the final word can be countered. It got flying and hexproof, and instant and sorcery spells you control can be countered by spells or abilities. I love this creature and I'm sure this creature will be the most uh, wanted creature in this whole set, just looking at it now and haven't really seen the other uh, creatures in the set at all. <laughs> I mean, they got flying in Hexproof, it can be countered. Your instant sorceries uh, uh, can be countered either. I mean, uh, this is just a good game when it when it's cast and you, uh, your opponents can't really do much about it. Of course, there are other ways to kill it, but, uh, but still, it's such a nice card and I would love to have this. Something that can kill this uh, Sphinx is uh, Cosselex Return, which is a red instant that costs you 3 mana to cast. Devoid is also uh, coming back in, uh, in this uh, new set, where uh, this card has no color. And then the uh, Coslex return deals 2 damage to each creature. Whenever you cast an Andrassi creature spell with converted mana cost 7 or greater, you may exile, exile Coslex return from your graveyard. If you do, Coslex return deals 5 damage to each creature. So these 5 damage can, for instance, kill the, the spells we had uh, we just saw before. Speaking of this card, it's, uh, it's really awesome that for 3 mana you get to deal 2 damage to each creature. So you can kill off a lot of uh, little things, but even if, if this, for instance, is countered, uh, you can still use it in a graveyard whenever you cast a, a little dressy uh, creature with mana cost 7 or greater. You can also put it in your, in your graveyard yourself, I don't know if, if that would work at all and if you would do that and why and so on, but you can still do that. Uh, 5 damage to each creature once uh, it gets exiled is uh, really, uh, really awesome again to uh, wipe the whole board. So. Uh, it's really awesome and also one of those uh, cards I'm betting we, we will see a lot of people want. 
Mina and then Wildborn is a legendary elf ally creature that costs you 4 mana to cast and is red and green, and is a 4-4. Four four. You may play an additional land on each of your turns. For 2 mana, you can return a land you control to its owner's hand, tie a creature, gains Tramel on the end of turn. This really makes me want to play an Awakened Day, because now I can, you know, return my lands if something happens to them, if they, they die or whatever. You can uh, return a land uh, to your hand to protect them, and also uh, creatures can get their trampled. So this is uh, pretty nice, and we must not forget, of course, that uh, you can play an additional land on each of your turns. So definitely a lot of uh, value, and uh, will really be good in a, in a landfall and a waking day. Ailey, Eternal Pilgrim, is a black and white core cleric legendary creature that costs you 2 mana and is a 2-3. It got death touch, and for 1 mana you can sacrifice another creature. You get life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. For 3 mana you can sacrifice another creature. Exile target non-land permanent. Activate this ability only if you have at least 10 more life than your starting life total. With uh, with all the life gaining we uh, we just saw in the battle for Seneca, I'm, I'm I definitely think that uh, this would be really easy to get off and can uh, quickly become really annoying to the opponent that you just can keep sacrificing another creature because uh, because you can both you know sacrifice another creature to get life but also sacrifice another creature to exile target non land permanent also which means that it doesn't only have to be creatures that you, that uh, that you exile but also other stuff. So uh, I definitely think that the life game would be a big part of uh, the new set and also from Bell for Seneca, so definitely a nice card. The last card I want to show you today is called Kalitas Trader of Get, and it's a black legendary vampire warrior creature that costs you 4 mana to cast and is 3 4 with lifelink. If an untold creature an opponent controls would die, instead exile that card and put a 2 2 black zombie creature total on the battlefield. For 3 mana, you can sacrifice another vampire or zombie to put two 1-1 one, one counters on Kalitas straight off get. The, the best thing I like uh, about this creature is that it supports vampires and zombies, and with the return to uh, Innistrad, this will be uh, really good. And also, of course, that uh, instead of uh, creatures going to the graveyard, it will uh, exile them instead, and you, you get to put creatures out. So it definitely, uh, definitely is a nice creature, and I'm really looking forward to see the vampires and zombies we might get in this uh, new set, but also, in, again, in Innistrad. This will become really relevant, so uh, definitely a nice card. Those are the leaks cards I wanted to show you. Remember that I put a link uh, down below that you can check, where there are um, uh, a few more cards and also uh, land cards that uh, you can check out. The official spoiler season will start in two weeks, so if you uh, if you want to stay up to date with this, you're more than welcome to subscribe to me. You can leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think of these new cards you have seen. Until next time, have fun, guys.